Greetings, people of the world. Uh, my name is John Bell, and I'm the director of the Ballard Institute and Museum of Puppetry. And uh, I'm joined tonight, we're joined tonight by Dr. Youngman Song for this puppet forum entitled Things That Act Shakespeare, which I'm very excited about and Shakespeare is always something I feel like it's a bit confusing to me or it's a lot to deal with. And then we're dealing with it in terms of puppets and objects. I wanted to let you know that despite the situation of the coronavirus situation, which is currently getting uh, kind of worse right now in the Northeastern US, uh, we are doing things online like this event we are also um, doing uh, online um, workshops now and then. An interesting thing that happened uh, about a month ago is that we reopened our museum Saturdays from 10 to 4 in downtown stores, Connecticut. And uh, people can come visit uh, after making reservations, so please feel free to to uh, make a reservation and come and see our museum if you're in the Northeast. Also, we will be uh, streaming the final presentations uh, of the Puppet Arts Program students in December, and that's gonna be super exciting. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. Our fourth and final puppet forum for the semester will be entitled um, Puppetry in Engineering, and that's with uh, Professor Ed Weingart, who's currently the chair of the Dramatic Arts Department at the uh, University of Connecticut, and uh, a, uh, an engineer, in fact, uh, in theater. Also, Jason Lee, who's a professor in the Yukon School of Engineering, and uh, puppeteer Basil Twist from, from New York City. Uh, whom uh, Ed Weingart collaborated on a very interesting production. So please come and, and, and see that. Something called uh, Winter Welcome is going to happen in downtown stores where our museum is located on December 5th from five to seven uh, and PM. And there'll be outdoor pre installations and performances and the Ballad Institute is going to be involved with one of those. I, think, I don't think I mentioned that the forum I spoke about earlier, Puppetry and Engineering is Thursday, December 3rd uh, before the Saturday winter welcome. Okay, uh, our current exhibitions up right now include um, Shakespeare and Puppetry, which Dr. Sung um, curated and then another exhibit of uh, Paul Vincent Davis and the Art of Puppet Theater. Come check those out. Those are also online. Uh, you can see the exhibits a little bit different online, but uh, you can see them there. Also, we're super excited because uh, Youngman is curating the next exhibition at the Ballad Institute that should open, we think in February. And that's going to be uh, based on the vast Ballard Institute collections of over 3000 puppets and Min is going to be looking at representation and, and the ways that uh, puppets represent different races and genders and ethnicities and how that works. So I think it's going to be as fascinating as um, Min's work with uh, Shakespeare and puppetry. I think Min is, well, Min is gonna talk a lot about the exhibition that's currently up at the Ballard Institute. I wanted to uh, introduce Min by saying that she uh, completed a practice in research PhD entitled Animating Everyday Objects uh, in Performance, Animating Everyday Objects in Performance at the University of Roehampton in the UK in 2014. And her writings have appeared in Performance Research and Art Press to Asian Theater Journal and Contemporary Theater Review. She edited in 2017, a special issue of the British journal Puppetry Notebook about Shakespeare and puppets, which I've been looking at um, recently, super fascinating. 
and she was a <clears throat> researcher in residence at the Institut International de la Marionette in charleville mezieres France, France, to lay the ground for a book on Shakespeare and puppetry. As a puppet maker, she has participated in numerous projects, including the Royal Shakespeare Company and Little Angel Theatre's co-production of Venus and Adonis, which I think Min's going to talk a bit about. And she's taught in the fields of theater and fine arts at the University of Roehampton, the University of Connecticut, where she is now our esteemed colleague at the School of Fine Arts and the University of Kent. So um, welcome, Min, to this puppet forum. I'm, it's so nice that you're here. And I wanted to ask you, how did you get interested in Shakespeare and how did you get interested in puppets? Thank you for the question. That makes my job easier to, I wasn't quite sure how to begin. Um, I, I touched my nose. No. And <laughs> could you show me the first? Um, yes, uh, so as uh, in, in my bio, this is uh, in 2004, it was like 16 years ago, I was uh, very lucky to be around uh, the Little Angel Theater. So, may call it is the home of British puppetry. And then I worked as a uh, I worked as a, a, an assistant of one of the founders of the theater, Lindy Wright. Um, the, this is a project, I think, primarily led by Gregory Doran. At the time he was a celebrated the director of Royal Shakespeare Company. And later in 2012, he was appointed as an artistic director of Royal Shakespeare Company. Um, the contact the, the little angel to, to do this project. Um, so he, I think this uh, Venus and Adonis, if people who doesn't know, it is not a play, it is a sonnet, it's a poem. It's an erotic poem written by Shakespeare and it was one of the most popular piece he ever wrote at the, at the time of Shakespeare. Um, it's, it, it, it's a great, uh, so director Doran had the very personal, uh, personally he is very drawn to this uh, poem. And then he's been, he had been thinking a lot about how to stage this because it was not written for theater. And then he got the idea when he visited Japan for tour, then he visited um, Bunraku Theater that is Japanese puppet theater. And then he got the idea that, oh, he, he can stage this poem in with puppets. And then he came to the little angel in his neighborhood. He passed by it a lot and then see if they can do it together. So as far as I understand, it was first time where Shakespeare Company actually had a puppet show. Um, so I was lucky to be around at that time. And then I participated in that uh, in the project as an assistant maker for uh, Lindy Wright. And it was, uh, you know, it uh, was very, at that time, it was like compared to all the other projects, it was really well funded. And then there were great puppeteers, makers came to work on that show. So I, was, I did mostly sewing at the time. So that was my job because I studied costume and then, yes. Um, sorry, my, my children are uh, sad. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, uh, yes. Could I? Can I ask you yes. about that? Like, I I was wondering what what you has what was your background or the way you what were the ways you were thinking about Shakespeare before you got involved in Venus and Adonis, and then what was it like for you to see this Shakespeare sonnet being performed by these puppets, was that uh, shocking or different or was it puzzling to you? What, um, yes. what was it Actually, like to see that? Before this, so I, was, I came to UK to study theater design 
And then I somehow wandered into this uh, magical place called the Little Angel. And at the time I was a student, um, uh, I was BA student, uh, undergraduate student. And then like Shakespeare, I didn't know anything about. So at the time I just did the, I just did anything I can do at the Little Angel. My English was pretty poor that I said, I will do anything except for answering telephone because I was not confident in talking on phone. So I started with like stuffing envelopes and then I kind of sneaked into the workshop and then I, so it was, so I didn't know, um, much about Shakespeare. I knew, I heard about, I heard the names, of course, I knew that they were famous plays. So, but what I thought, so I was, by the time I was working around the, I was a theater design student and then working at the Little Angels Theater for around two years at the time, like there was um, two years. And then I had in this preconception that Shakespeare, uh, puppetry is a more visual theater. Right. So also partly to do with the fact that a lot, there were a lot of, uh, um, in, the, in, the, in the world I was in, there were of course in England or anywhere else, this, the language is very important. But on the other hand, there was also this emphasis on visual element of theater and non verbal right. theater. Okay. And then puppetry to me was more like visual element of mm. it. But everyone, we all was excited about Royal Shakespeare Company is taking up right. puppetry at the same time. Right. Um, and then, you know, I was really a beginner and then, you know, you have that kind of preconception or bias about certain thing. It has to be done this way. Right. But since then I, I mean, I learned more, it's funny, I'm Asian, but I had, I didn't know anything about Asian puppetry. At mm. time it was more European, like idea that this is a visual theater and puppetry is a visual theater also. Right. So, so that was I, part of it. Yes. I think that's for me in thinking about our conversation right now and your presentation right now, uh, I, I feel like that's, the, that's the thing that puzzles me although I've been involved with Shakespeare puppet shows. Shakespeare, for me, growing up and studying Shakespeare and being an English major, is all about this intense word play, you know, and acting, act, great actors like Laurence Olivier acting Shakespeare. And then puppetry is, your, is this visual medium. And there's something about those two essences that in one way seem like, oh, they don't, how could they go together? But they do. And the fact that they do go together in different ways is so interesting to me. Yeah, I think to me that the, the reason Gregory Doran, the director got, when he saw the Brunaku and because it, it has this click was that Brunaku, I mean, the Brunaku literally means, Bun means literature then Laku means music. So Bunaku originally, originally it is a very literature focused art form. And then the, the chanter who does, uh, who narrates and do voices are kind of, kind of leading the performance. And then the puppetry comes in as a, it's not compliment because not compliment, but the, the, that literature is very important. And one of the most important writer mm -hmm. for uh, Bunaku, I mean, he was, uh, I mean, Jap what Japanese, the, is the Chikamatsu, he is often called Japanese Shakespeare, Shakespeare right. of Japan. Right. I mean, I mean he's, he, he wrote, he was, uh, he lived uh, kind of long before Bunaku Theater was founded, but it's, let's call it the Japanese, but he wrote specifically for puppet theater. And right. then Bunaku was very different kind of, I uh, know, Bunaku, no, Ningyo Jururi was very different 
uh, form at that time also. But so in so when Greg saw that, then he kind of saw how he right. could work this out with the, the um, with the pop with the puppetry. Mm -hmm. So a lot of myself, uh, I when I wrote about Venus and Adonis in my PhD, I wrote about um, the the material quality of uh, quality of puppets. So right. there was Adonis who was a human and Venus who was a goddess was made with were made with different materials that Venus being light and the Adonis being heavy. So mm -hmm. that kind of is that that that's my focus on PhD and then the Lindy writes to craft. Mm -hmm. But we I mean after I thought what I realized later was that what was also important when Naku style theater was talked to, and then a lot of it, a lot of the thing talked about in terms in relation to Bunaku is the puppet form. So there's right. another long story we can talk about, but let's yeah. put it aside. But what Greg did was he brought in uh, the narrator who mm -hmm. read who read the story, right? And then has uh, there was Elizabeth there he created uh, there was a, a, a guitarist who played the Elizabethan music goes with the narration. Nice. So, so that's the how, uh, to me, that probably was more, I think, not just the kind of structure of puppets, but the, the actual, the, how that whole structure of the show mm. Mm. was, was uh, important mm. for how, for the, for the whole production, I think, mm. I think. And, that, and then my understanding is that, like, that time around the time you saw Venus and Adonis, that <clears throat> in England, as as you as your um, puppet notebook issue talks about, there was a whole fluorescence of of puppet shows with and about Shakespeare, and and so, some of that work, which is now on display at the Ballard Institute. But could you talk about? that particular development of many different types of, of puppet shows about Shakespeare? I think I'm thinking of your PowerPoint slide. Ah, uh, yeah. So the, the, what I was going to say initially was, um, so I dare say that this, this Venus and Adonis is kind of prologue. I wouldn't say triggered, but I think it was kind of prologue of uh, puppetry boom in the UK. Mm. So as many of the, the shows you in on the other side of Atlantic also know about is War Horse was after 2004 production of Venus and Adonis, the right. like major of the major theater companies like National Theater produced War Horse in 2007. Now on the same year, English National Opera produced um, Satagraha with the Improbable. Right. There was um these two and then that improbable kind of, theater sorry probable theater yeah, yeah no, philip uh, glass uh, opera yeah so philip glass yeah philip glass opera so so this war horse and philip glass opera was were produced by so puppets came into really kind of main stage i mean mm -hmm. as you most most of you probably know that war horse pro, is one of not one of the most successful show. They created the most income for the national theater since mm. uh, that was this puppet show. And then the Joy, the main character also still working on <laughs> appears right. here and there in all the important occasions. So, and then there are a lot of other big shows started to bring in puppetry, not like, and but Venus and Adonis was puppet show, but there, this human and puppet mixture shows were created. Right. And then some of them, and then some of them probably just use a puppet for, they realize that actually you can have a puppet animal. Animals can do puppets or children will be puppets. But 
also there are other productions that brings puppets into for example like royal opera house did the shadow puppets uh with the with the steve who actually puppet directed the Venus and adonis and that kind of thing happened in the uk um uh, by the way like it's just to so in, in so the the metropolitan opera is streaming actually at this moment so you but you can do it you can go later the, with in, in william kentridge who worked closely sure. with the uh Hands. handspring i mean william kentridge is lulu they are streaming now wow. and until tomorrow and then this yeah. is saturday you can watch Akhenaten. There was uh, the Philip McDermott directed. Is another Philip Glass opera. Philip McDermott di directed. It's not really puppet, but some. Um, yeah, it's the same team who created the. Uh, it's not same team because Julian is not there anymore. But you can watch it on Metropolitan Opera, like um, streaming free. Sure. It would be uh, good. Yeah. So. So from there, what I wanted to say was that, so Warhol's gave, I believe, gave a uh, handspring com puppet company it's from South Africa, like uh, kind of gave opportunity, you can say, to do more daring work in, hmm. in with, the, with the national and then they, they worked on a show called "Or You Could Kiss Me." Okay, um, right. <clears throat> so it will, I I I kind of studied the show a bit, and then so they resent a lot about like puppets just being doing uh, animals and children. Right. So they wanted to do they wanted to do puppets doing human. Right. And this, if I'm, I think this is like Basil Jones and Adrian Kohler, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the yes. couple who founded Handspring, I think, and you the, could kiss me. That's a, it's a show about their relationship. Yeah, right? their relationship. That's, yes. I mean, which is very different from War Horse. Yes. And then to me, the one up, the, then, then they went on to produce another show with Tom Morris, who uh, who directed the war horse that is a midsummer night dream oh, okay um to my mind that a midsummer night dream didn't really get good reviews or like didn't get good audience responses but to my mind that is a very important production done with uh, Shakespeare and puppetry because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in they some they managed to create uh, you know a puppet universe within right. the Shakespeare's within the in, in text. Um, but the yeah, mid and Midsummer Night's Dream, like so many of Shakespeare's, maybe the the comedies or the it lends itself the the characters in the imagery like with with bottom in midsummer you need to have a a mask he yeah, a head yeah. or mm. you look at um uh the the 1930s uh production of of midsummer night's dream um by the what's his name the german expressionist um uh mm. director the, the, which so easily goes into this world of spectacle Mm. And it, it makes me think also of the little theater in Chicago um, with Ellen Van Volkenberg. Mm. What got them into puppets really was Midsummer Night's Dream. Yeah. And she and Maurice Brown realized, oh, we can show the world of the, the fairies and, and, and stuff with, with mm. puppets. So there, there's something about aspects of Shakespeare that are already going in the direction of spectacle and yeah. image and maybe but, objects so they the hand spring did a, a midsummer night dream in 1970s i believe 80s oh. 70s end of 70s and then even at that time even that they kind in in you know that 
book, the Handspring Puppet Company book, uh, uh, edited by Jane Taylor, that he they talk about that at the time they didn't want to do the the directors or producers' idea was to do pop the fairies with the puppets, yes, but they didn't like the idea. They wanted to. They, they that's just too, too normative. The puppets mm -hmm. always do fairies. The humans do human. Right. And then they kind of they they he I think it was Adrian talks about it in a way that in the world where apart the apartheid world the the world divided and the, like these these people are this and then that even in that kind of world you cannot kind of give puppets as a human role. Mm -hmm. Still, they had to do it in a way that puppets do fairies and the humans do human. Um, the, the, then I, go ahead. in this side, in the new production, they tried to, they wanted to go beyond. And then what was very interesting was that they set Hippolyta, the, the queen, as a puppet mm -hmm. maker. Oh. And then she's creating all this, all this world. So she was in the first, very first scene, actually play begin, before play begins, we see she actually make the puppets of Oberon and Titania. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she was actually creating all this world that is the puppets are kind of God and like fairies. And so that, and then, that kind of gives the kind of subtext to the mm -hmm. the Shakespeare's um, uh, play. So still, that's that. I mean, Venus, just to be not saying not only that I could be kind of away from doing specifically Shakespeare and puppetry, but when I saw that Hand Springs a Midsummer Night's Dream, okay, I felt. Yeah, I mean, I'm still not very confident about talking about Shakespeare. Uh -huh. There are a lot, there has been like study about this for hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. <clears throat> right. And then I'm not, in, I'm not really confident in English in that much either. But that, that production kind of got me into dig more into this um, area. And then you, you, when you put together that special issue of Puppet Notebook in right there, um, I mean, you were looking at all of these different productions, mostly in the UK. I mean, how do you make sense of that? There's so many different types of puppets, so many different approaches to theater and approaches to Shakespeare with those puppets. How did you start to understand what that might mean? Are there relationships among those different forms, differences? Well, like, <laughs> like with this kind of thing, you just put out the call for contribution, yes, and then see what comes. <laughs> and then I, it, it's one of those, that kind of project. I, I, I mean, when I put the proposal, when I put, the proposal through to British Unima about this. And then I had this, that another great production that also kept me into the subject that was forced entertainment to tabletop Shakespeare. And then I was uh, very much, um, I was really keen to talk about with Tim, the artistic director of uh, Forced Entertainment, about the um, about the show and then publish it here because it was very much about. Uh, so, 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 so maybe our audience, I don't know how many out there, but they don't know about the show. Forced Entertainment is uh, if it is not the one, is one of the most important company at this moment doing contemporary theater in Brit in the UK. Um, they never, they hardly, it's the first project that they did with uh, the, uh, they did with the play. They most, they mostly do devised uh, work. Mm -hmm. 
non-text-based work. So right. what they did was they did all 36 Shakespeare plays on tabletop with, so they produce one, like around 15 minutes show uh, of Shakespeare play on tabletop with everyday object. So right. then, yes. And then perform, they have six performers so six people doing six shows, and then and then they you, they normally do it in theater, but at this moment, luckily, they are doing this uh, lockdown edition, like quarantine right. edition of the show, and then you can actually go and watch it on their website, and you you can watch it on their YouTube channel. Um, so this uh, was um, what, what was I talking about? Uh, force yeah. entertainment. Yeah, force entertainment. Yeah. So they did this uh, with everyday object. This is right. uh, very different from other. Right. Yes. So yeah, when I planning this issue, that's one thing I wanted to do. That's one thing I had in my mind to do. The other things came in as I, as after we put call for contributions mm. that I learned from it. And there were like, except for that one, I didn't know about. Mm -hmm. So can we just to look through, mm. shall we have a go through the, we are not going, I'm not going to talk all, oh, no, 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 not, we haven't got there yet, Emily. <laughs> um, yes. So we have uh, he, first article, the first very first thing it has was uh, a letter to Shakespeare Globe. So quickly, let's talk about this quickly. In 2016, as I was getting ready for this, Emma Rice, who was the artistic director of uh, Nihai Theater, got was appointed as uh, artistic director of the Shakespeare Globe. You know, uh, there are a lot of uh, excitement and anxiety around that disappointment, but for the puppetry people, because Nihai worked very closely with the puppets. They don't do like puppet right. puppet show, but as Lindy Wright's daughter, Sarah Wright worked with Nihai. Um, so we puppetry of UK puppetry people expected that we will be able to now see puppetry in, in Shakespeare Globe. And then she didn't disappoint. So she brought in puppetry. There were puppet shows produced in Shakespeare Globe, mm -hmm. but her appointment didn't last long. And then it was very controversial. And then she left the company after two years. Um, so there was a letter to Shakespeare Globe mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. written by Blind Summit, who mm -hmm. some of you, you may know. And then we have uh, Edward Gordon uh, 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 article about Edward Gordon Craig's um, right. uh, drama for fools. It was adaptation of Romeo and Juliet written by Didier Placid. We we know that he's one of the most important scholar of. Uh, puppetry and especially plays and then and then we have a very interesting collaboration between uh like uk and france it's the shakespeare versus moliere mm -hmm. i thought that, that was it was interesting because it was right after the brexit was decided and then we won't be able to do this kind of collaboration in the future. So, right. and then there was also this Macbeth writing about Macbeth who actually led the Little Angel Theater, uh, Little Angel Theater, Little Angel so Youth Theater. So it was kind of doing Macbeth with the puppetry with young people. Mm -hmm. So he wrote specifically about that and then and then there was also unexpectedly interesting article was, we also got response from a composer who wrote uh, uh, opera, uh, Winter's Tale. And then at the beginning, they decided to puppet with the, the Mamil, uh, what is the, Mamilius, the, the prince, like child. Mm 
Mm -hmm. So it was because they decided to bring in puppets because they thought puppetry is much easier to deal with all the issues around having real child. Right. Then he talks about how he composed for puppet that was handled by three puppeteers. Mm -hmm. So so that was interesting. And then thinking about all the hype about the puppetry and opera after Satagraha, I thought was uh, very interesting. And then we have we have horse entertainment here. Right. I think we can kind of talk about a little bit about tabletop Shakespeare because we have all objects of from that show. Right. In the exhibited in 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 our exhibition, Ballard exhibition. Um, yes. So, so this interview was because I am I am coming from puppetry, in, and then like when I asked, to, and then the Bunaku style puppets in UK were often called the tabletop puppet also. So right. I asked him. Were you were you aware or aware that like the the tabletop puppet there is a the kind of form called tabletop puppet and then he said no I haven't seen puppet shows for a long time he didn't understand but uh, actually today the Terry O'Connor one of the members of the company gave mm -hmm. workshop uh, for our Matthew Professor Matthew Cohen's class mm -hmm. and then their understanding of objects is, is pretty hmm. is it's more closer than it's closer than what I expected to uh, closer to closer to puppet okay years than I expected to um, so I highly recommend <laughs> I don't know where I can we can get get hold of the copies, but right. uh, this uh, interview is. Uh, I know that there were articles published, and I heard there is someone already writing PhD about this uh, tabletop Shakespeare by Force Entertainment. But I think this will be very helpful for. <laughs> one of one of the things I noticed about uh, that that issue and the, the productions you 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 were talking about is that in some cases, like in Venus and Adonis, that we saw that image of those puppets, we're talking about puppets representing humans, you know, regular and reflecting this incredible influence of of bunraku theater or you know tabletop theater from Japan. And uh, or the the Winter's Tale uh, production where they wanted to use a puppet of a child because it's a little bit easier to use than an actual child. But then with forced entertainment, we're talking about object theater where it's bottles like a bottle of vinegar represents Hamlet or you yourself in the dialogue that you published in, in um, a puppet notebook you you engage um, with Terry O'Connor um, in, in a dialogue about your own production of Hamlet with tissues. And this seems to me like it, maybe also for people who might not be so familiar with object performance, object theater versus as it, compared to puppet theater, like there's something very different going on when Hamlet's represented by a bottle of vinegar or maybe a tissue versus a puppet that's got a head and ears and eyes and nose and arms and body. What, can you talk a little bit about objects versus puppets in, in productions of Shakespeare? Yeah, um, so, so I did, I kind of, when I got, when I was preparing for this talk, I completely forgot about I also did one <laughs> a long time ago. Uh, so it was the, my show that was the Hamlet tissues because I did it with the tish, the Kleenex actually. Was uh, actually, in, was not inspired directly, but it was Stuart Sherman who's performance artist in the 1970s. Um, he had this show called Hamlet Portrait. So 
the title kind of got I got the inspiration from there because Stuart Sherman also did the object performance. Um, and then my PhD uh, supervisor at the time told me that Stuart Sherman is your ancestor. So uh, my my ancestor. So yes. Um, so the, my show was uh, about, I could, as I was reading Hamlet, I realized that um, all the deaths in Hamlet was uh, inflicted by poison. And then in earlier in, in, in the description that the ghost explained how the, 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 the effect of that poison inside of his body. And then I was kind of thinking about how to do Hamlet and I was thinking about ghosts and then this ghost with this white cloth. And then somehow I got into the idea of this tissue paper kind of almost melting mm -hmm. with in contact of water so mm. so that show was a a lot mostly about death in uh, so they also what is it? ophelia also drowned herself right so the show was about the death and then death in hamlet mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. is very different so what I brought in with the tissue paper into Hamlet was it was that kind of body met, body as a material that's mm. dying mm -hmm. with the poison and water, and then this tissue paper that integrate uh, disintegrate with the, mm -hmm. in contact with water. This kind of this 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 is what I brought. I what I tried to kind of make it into one piece of show. Mm -hmm. uh, it was not straight performance. Um, it was not. And then but for state entertainment, uh, Shakespeare are very, very, very different. Mm -hmm. um, there is, is more like storytelling. OK. It tells the story straight. Mm -hmm. um, and then they don't do all the all the important, the, what is famous lines. Right. You want to hear to be or not to be okay. in Hamlet. Yeah. No, so it is plot. They tell you the story with object. Mm -hmm. And then this object are playing each character. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you, it's not, I really cannot help read the symbolism in the object. Mm -hmm. Like for example, the one we have a Macbeth in, it says a linseed oil, it is mm -hmm. Macbeth. And then like, what is like oil and this fiery mm -hmm. unstable character, then it's difficult not to relate it. Mm -hmm. But um, so this is a, that also that object brings into mm -hmm. the show. Mm -hmm. And then also when you use everyday object, like as if you may think trivial mm -hmm. with in conjunction with the, the one of the greatest literature ever written right. in English language, there is a, there's a kind of clash or that can productive clash, I think. Okay. It yeah. can be generated there. Yeah. Mm. I mean, that's exactly, that, that seems to be exactly it. This productive clash is what you said that I think that's super interesting yeah I just that's just came out. I think I do I need to make a note I think okay <laughs> should, should we do you want to look at, at yeah let's do the, that yes the uh the exhibition at the Ballard Institute or look at those images and yes yes which is a little bit different because that exhibit includes a lot of the English productions the British productions you mentioned but then also some uh, more American ones Yes. Uh, so you look at, happen to look at American ones first. <laughs> so we had, uh, so we had, uh, we, what we have in, amongst other things, we have two productions of, of Hamlet. We've been talking about Hamlet, that's probably interesting thing. So we have one from totally out of joint Hamlet. Uh, uh, created by Bread and Puppet Company, uh, theater, Bread and Puppet Theater in 2018. 
is uh, we managed to bring Ophelia here, you see the tall figure. And then we have on this small scale, whole proscenium you can see there is, uh, is a great small works, uh, uh, Olivia's uh, Hamlet. So the, if I can talk about bread and puppet first, is it was a, as far as I understand, it was a response to this theater, Grim, Greensboro, Greensboro, Greenboro, yes, Greenboro Theater. I think we can go on to next slide. Yes. So, so on the right, we have a bread and puppet uh, theaters, uh, Hamlet. Uh, also, was also this the theater was built like model, modeled after Shakespeare Globe, and then they have. have Shakespeare Globe, you probably know that it doesn't have a ceiling, but it has to, this one has a ceiling, but it's really high. So, so they created like this tall cardboard puppets in this space. And then it was after this, now by, we can say goodbye to our, the, the President Trump. So it was also comment on using Shakespeare's text and then it also make political uh, comment, criticism about this the Trump era. So as far as I understand, Schumann, Peter Schumann had also interest in what's going on around this Denmark, the conflict and war going on around Denmark. And then he kind of interweave the current at that contemporary political situation in the US and the world, the whole world, with the, the plot of uh, Hamlet. And we have great small works, uh, Olivia's Hamlet. I think I can hand over to you because you're director and performer of the show, I think. Yes. Um... Yeah, I, I'll, I hope I, I'll be brief, but the company I work with, Great Small Works, which is um, a New York-based company started in the early 90s uh, doing puppet theater and activist performance. We, we got into toy theater, which is flat cutout proscenium uh, arch productions, as you can see in the photo on the left. And uh, we started doing uh, shows about the, our mo the political moment in time. But then Stephen Kaplan, a Yukon puppet arts graduate who works is part of Great Small Works, and I um, got interested in classical shows like Faust, Dr. Faustus, and, and Hamlet. Lawrence, Sir Lawrence Olivier had done a famous 1949 film of Hamlet. And because he grew up like so many British people with toy theater, he made a toy theater uh, booklet, pretty much like the 19th century toy theater booklet you could buy with photographs of himself that you can see there with a white shirt with his uh, dagger and his sword and the other actors in the production uh, turned into a toy theater show. And we decided, well, let's make that into a toy theater show. We severely cut the, the text and we added biographical segments from a, a biography of Sir Lawrence Olivier about the time he was making this, this Hamlet show. And um, it was interesting what you were saying about forced entertainment because in our show, we, um, we kept to be or not to be and some of the classic um, speeches, you know, which are so beautiful to, to, uh, to perform. And uh, it was for me uh, thinking about it right now. It was really interesting to it was to use that language, you know, the Shakespeare language, which is as you were saying, young young men, so charged and fantastic with these this tiny uh, tiny stage and tiny puppets, who, as you can see, don't do very much. But it was very. It, it, it worked. It, it, it worked well, kind of to, some, to my surprise. But I, I think it has, certainly that's something Laurence Olivier thought would, would work well, and it did. So 
two different puppet versions of Hamlet from the US. Yeah, what I really found interesting about Grace Small Works is, is that is it's kind of bridges. I, I introduced when we do the opening, I introduced the the Grace Small Works Hamlet is the first one because we I thought it kind of bridges between like the virtual so actors Shakespeare theater to right. this world of puppetry so I found it really and then I found it really interesting and then it kind of intellectually stimulating I think mm. uh, to me right our show is very much about Olivier doing yes. Hamlet you know it wasn't just the puppet Hamlet it was about Sir Lawrence Olivier who yes was... yes also like we oh, can we go into like next to next to one the slide I think we can so but so we had the five we have five Macbeth different Macbeth uh in the show like but you can see this variety that we can have this kind of same kind of pictures arranged with the famous actors who did Shakespeare, like Hamlet, right. but it, it, like Olivier or David Tennant or like all oh, like the big names. But if we do the same with the puppets displayed in Ballard at this moment, I mean, I don't, we had one more that is a marionette. We didn't get good photograph of it, so he's not here. So the range can, the, can be quite different, of course. So roughly we have from left, we have tiny ninja. I think that those ninjas around this size, combo motion ninjas, and then we have here Mr. Smile take up the role of Macbeth. And then next we have Lindsay the oil bottle who's doing Macbeth. Then we have uh, we have a show that created the, the world of Macbeth in wrestling ring, and then we have wrestler Macbeth. And then we have uh, Macbeth's whole play was done with birds. So there is a rooster Macbeth. So on, on the one hand, so I'm not like, I'm not like uh, someone who studied the Shakespeare who got to interest in puppetry. I'm coming from puppetry and then so great production done by, done with, uh, based on Shakespeare done by puppets. So I think my kind of angle is that what is great about Shakespeare to me is that a lot of people done Shakespeare and then we can bring in all this kind of different kind of puppets and then we see the range and the, the differences and then from that angle we, we know more we can see the hidden depths that we couldn't see just reading or done with the humans this is this is why I kind of deliberately just brought in Macbeth um, mm -hmm. to see, to show, demonstrate. On the one hand, it also demonstrates the wide, not just about Shakespeare, but the wide range of things we call puppets and objects in theater mm -hmm. that is uh, gathered under the name of Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, what I thought. Um, you you just you mentioned you, you just said something about how the puppet the puppet shows bring out uh, some hidden hidden aspects of the shakes of of the plays. I think that's really interesting because I th I think it's it's true, um, but I'm interested in how that works because like. I think I, I don't know if if people might think that to do Shakespeare with puppets is somehow dumbing it down or oversimplifying it or turning it into, you know, people often think of puppets as as children's entertainment, you know, like reducing yeah. it like uh, with the lambs did these re reduced mm -hmm. versions of Shakespeare. 
but in fact, I think you're right that that the the presence of the puppets makes in a way the text even stronger. Yeah. Maybe it's the same way that Bunraku theater that Chikamatsu wrote has this beautiful text, but then the and the puppets exist on a is it like a parallel plane or um, uh, a different world? I'm not mm -hmm. sure, but the the way those thing those two work together is is super interesting to me. I I, I appreciated what you said just a moment ago yeah, about. I mean, I still haven't like it's what really gets me when I kind of look at the tiny ninja that. I mean, I know about the birds because Lindy actually explained that there are a lot of, and then when you see the moment when the, the last fight in the Macbeth happens in cockfight, then you kind of get it why it has to be bird. But still, there is something about Macbeth done by Mr. Smile. I still kind of keep thinking of, cannot help thinking about it, like, but certainly it has this something in it that like it makes me think, but I still haven't got it. So having said that, so these ninjas are very well like what before I got to talk to you about this, like I heard many people talked about this. Oh, there was a Shakespeare done by little tiny figures, and then people, but no one saw it. Uh. <laughs> so, so, so I was so excited about to actually bring those ninjas to yes. Ballard. And then when you said he, Dove Weinstein, who created the show, studied with you, um, was, was just so exciting. And then here we, and then because I know that there are a lot of people who want to see kind of glimpse of it and it doesn't exist online. So yeah. I'd like to show, uh, the six minute kind of, it was not real theater kind of performance, but I think it all, I believe Dove made it as a kind of promotion piece. Great. So we have a here exclusive. Exclusive <laughs> rare performance. Yeah, yeah. So you can you cannot see this anywhere else. So you can see this here. So Emily, could you When shall we three meet again, in thunder, lightning, or in rain? When the battle's lost and won, that will be a set of sun. Where's the place? Upon the heath. There to meet with Macbeth. Fair is foul, and foul is fair. Hover through the fog and filthy air. What bloody man is that? This is the tyrant. Say to the king the knowledge of the broil, as thou didst leave it. Doubtful it stood, as two spent swimmers that do cling together and choke their art. Oh, the merciless Macdonald walled, worthy to be a rebel from the isles is supplied. And fortune on his damned quarrel smiling showed like a rebel's whore. But all's too weak, for brave Macbeth, well he deserves that name. Like Valor's minion carves out his passage till he face the slave. Unseamed him from the nave to the chaps and fixed his head upon our battlements. O oh, worthiest cousin. But I am faint. My gashes cry for help. Uh, go, get him surgeons. Who comes here? The worthy Thane of Ross. Uh, whence came thou, Thane? From Fife, great king, where Norway himself, with terrible numbers, assisted by that most disloyal traitor, the Thane of Cawdor, began a dismal conflict. But to conclude, the victory fell on us. Great happiness. No more shall that thane of Cawdor deceive our bosom interest go, pronounce his present death, and with his former title greet. Macbeth. So foul and fair a day I have not seen. What are these that look not like the inhabitants of the earth, and yet are on it? All hail Macbeth. Hail to thee, Thane of Glamps. All hail Macbeth. Hail to thee, Thane of Cawdor. All hail Macbeth that shall be king hereafter.
If it were done, when it is done, then twere well it were done quickly. How now, what news? He hath almost supped. Why have you left the chamber? We will proceed no further in this business. He hath honoured me of late, and I have bought golden opinions from all kinds of people, which would be worn now in their newest gloss, not cast aside so soon. Was the hope drunk wherein you dressed yourself? Has it slept since, and wakes it now to look so green and pale at what it did so freely? Prithee, peace! I dare do all that may become a man who dares do more is none. What beast was it then made you break this enterprise to me? If we should fail... Fail? But screw your courage to the sticking place, and we'll not fail. When Duncan is asleep, his two chamberlains will eye with wine, and west sail so convinced that their trench natures shall lie as in a death. What then cannot you and I perform upon the unguarded Duncan? Will it not be received when we have marked with blood those sleepy two and used their very daggers that they have done it? Who dares receive it else, as we will make our griefs and clamor roar at his death? I am settled and bend up each corporal agent to this terrible feat. Away, and mock the time with fairest show. False face must hide what the false heart doth know. You know your own degrees. Sit down. <laughs> My worthy lord, you do not give the cheer. <laughs> Sweet remembrancer. Uh, let good digestion wait on appetite and health on both. May it please your highness, sit. Where? Here is a place reserved, sir. Never let thy shake thy gory locks at me. Thou, thou canst not say that I did it. Gentlemen, rise. My noble lords, uh, uh, my, my lord is often thus and hath been from his youth. It, it is nothing. Uh, pray you, keep seat. A man. Aye, and a bold one too, that they may look on that which might fear the devil. Oh, proper stuff. When all's done, you look but on a stool. If I stand here, I saw him. My noble lord, your worthy friends do lack you. <laughs> do not muse at me, my most worthy friends. I have a strange infirmity, which is nothing to those that know me. Hence, horrible shadow! Unreal mockery! Hence! <laughs> it will have blood, they say. Blood will have blood. So interesting. He does such a great job, to my mind, with the text, right? I mean, he delivers it so well. What, 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 what attract you? You're obviously you very much like this production. What, what do you like about this puppet show? I think like that, I mean, this is the video we just saw was the only bit I saw and then of the show and then the things he sent us, the, it's this little, um, little figures and then we have displayed in Ballard Institute, you can come and see, then all the, it's the it's kind of very low tech uh, uh, set and then the way he executes it with a certain precision I think that combination kind of works really beautifully and then as I said like the the cast of Mr. Smile as Macbeth that I want to think further about like there's something that Mr. Smile can maybe subversively or ironically kind of talk about what who Macbeth is. That's um, 
because I don't know, the way I got get into this kind of thing is like, you know, you get thing kind of you, you see it and then, oh, yes, it works, but you don't know what, how, why it works kind of question. That's kind of question I really like. Right. And then this one has that exact question, right. like it works to me, but I don't know why. How can oh. I kind of work it out that that to me is uh, really fascinating and exciting. Well, so do you have the answer? Why no, does it work? No, still, like, I think there's something in it. Like, I don't know if you are watching this and they, if you could give me some, if, if what you think, that would be brilliant, I think. Like people For who are watching the, now, Yeah, maybe. We, we, so we're asking the, our wow, audience. How, why, why Mr. Smile? Yeah. I think, I think, I, 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 and Domi didn't give me an answer either. I did, I did ask, I think. In in watching this, I'm reminded of the fact you mentioned that, like I, Dove was a student in a puppet class I taught at NYU, and then after yeah. that he 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 I think he says he wa he was walking by in New York and went by these gumball machines mm -hmm. that are in front of the bodegas and mm -hmm. said oh, and when he made the show now I recall that it became one of those shows a downtown New York show that was extraordinarily popular. Like mm -hmm. all of a sudden, this tiny ninja Macbeth, everybody was writing about it. Everybody had to go see it. You know, did you see tiny ninja Macbeth? Oh no, yes I did. No, I'm going to see it. And it was a real sensation in a way. Yeah. So, I mean, it, I think it points to the fact- I you wish know, I that, was there. Like it, 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 it works the way you're, you're talking about it. And, it's 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 so fascinating for me about puppetry because you're not you don't say oh that's ridiculous there's this the smiley face mr smile is macbeth that's that's it should be totally different it, it that shouldn't work but people don't reject it mm. or you don't most people don't i don't know but instead you're drawn into it maybe because it's there's this uh frisson this conflict between the image and the text i i don't know i think that's that's some of it that you have to put it together yourself and you're looking at the objects and listening to his brilliant recitation and making it work i don't know yeah 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 so um yeah mm -hmm. yeah um and then i mean then then maybe we can move on to we can watch the i mean this i mean um i think emily can like uh, I, I put all the relevant to I mean, the reason we show the full video of this is that it's now available online but there are other productions or related productions you can watch on YouTube or other video online videos, so um, I compile the list and then then Emily, Emily, our invisible hand right. and we we'll, can put it on in the comment and then but this one is available online. But I'd like to see this one is uh, uh, Lindy Wright, uh, I, who create who designed and created um, a Venus and Adonis, Adonis puppet. Uh, and then she talks here about the bird's puppet of of Macbeth. I, I think this is some, you can see it on, it's from YouTube, but mm -hmm. I'd like to watch it together to, to, for this. made the decision to turn the characters into part bird, part human, um, which is an exciting change um, for us and, and it was made for all sorts of possibilities. Um, one could use things like the human hand, but give it a feeling of feathers. So if it, the fingers have a sort of featheriness about them, the beaks all slightly opens for, for, for the speaking characters anyway, so that they, they look as though the words could have come from them. Some of them are more human than others. Some we actually 
are quite bird-like still, but I think with Lady Macbeth here, um, she's quite human. She's a little bit Dior too. She's, she's a very smart lady. With her husband, he couldn't go into battle. So he has to be far more human. One moment there's the cockfight, which we actually turn them back into cocks again. Um, but he has quite a lot of, I mean, he has human arms. No wings, but a cloak that could have been wings. Um, and then legs, the, the legs and the body are made with a feeling of armour to them as though they might have come out of war, but then somehow that comes from the, the cocks, combs and things, you just feel that those could have been armour too. The witches, they are totally free and flexible here. The puppeteers can use their hands to pick up things. They, they're sort of weird enough for anything to happen with them, so if they, they do use a human hand, that's okay because they are so weird anyway. And we decided to go for the open mouth. It's not to speak, it's simply to give expression to them. I feel the words need to come from the movements rather than, than from the, the sort of jabber jabber that um, the mouth makes. King and the King's family have gone into swans because to, to kill the, a swan is, is a horrific thing, it's almost worse than killing the King really. So, um, but the young, the children of the kings uh, needed to be signets, they hadn't quite grown up yet. And that was quite a difficult thing to do because we, you'd, if you lose the swan's neck, you then no longer have a swan. So they're still quite swan-like, but they have little chins underneath there. So, so you just feel that there could be a mask there, there could be a human there. But they can do quite bird-like things still. Great. The, as I said, the the, the reason I I I like I, I really what I like about this exhibition is that you can see this contrast between bring gumbo motion figure ready-made and then in this kind of rough like DIY sort of theater and then that works beautifully and then greatly and then really stimulating. And then there's on the other end, you have this uh, designer maker with, who craft is like big the big the size of beak and then chin and then the hand mechanism and then even the shape of legs that is all element of puppets really detailed detailed elements of puppets or mm -hmm. all thought through and then created through created with the really great skills so bring shakespeare can because shakespeare being famous and then well loved that we can we can have these really different kind of things in one space under right. the same title. This I found it really uh, brilliant. Yeah, I and, and and interestingly parallel to the Tiny Ninja Macbeth in that, like Bun Raku, the performers are in the performer performers are in full view of the audience. There's direct manipulation. There's a lot of tabletop work going on, which you talked about earlier, although otherwise the two shows are quite different and Lindy Wright's puppets are so beautiful. I wanted to just thank the people watching for their comments. Polly Sonic asked, was uh, Tiny Ninja Macbeth made for film or originally staged? And I think we, we were talking earlier about how it was originally a live performance. And yes. uh, Jenna Beth Davidson uh, said, I love the smiley faces paired with the dark themes of Macbeth. When we, we were talking about these contrasts and comical and so sinister at the same time. And Lynn Tribble said one, that one may smile and smile and be a villain, uh, which is actually from Hamlet, but um, I think, am I wrong? Yeah. Um, so, we actually only have, we don't have that much time remaining, Min, oh. but I wondered if you, do you want to talk more about um, 
the uh, uh, midsummer not, not midsummer night. Yeah, let's quickly I'd like to yeah, because that has a whole different aspect of uh, puppet theater. So we can bring then it back quickly. Yes. Um, so the next to the next slide. So we also have two, one of Midsummer Night Dream, uh, What Fools These Mortals Be by uh, Fred Kerchak. It was the, the, the 1992. So these were kind of adapted. His uh, childhood was uh, how did do the dolls, um, they came, they, he, he, Played a bit, I think that he found, and then they so he he we we adapted this dolls into puppets uh, for the show. Um, so quickly go through that. So come, it, he kind of interweave like other things, interweave his personal uh, life crisis with the story. So it's a we had uh, this uh, Hippolyta had a uh, knife uh, going through her head. We were really concerned about like, if we, is, is, it, is it, I was very concerned about that displaying this uh, ballad, isn't it too violent or is it, so, is it okay to have it on the back of it, the back of the, uh, light, the, the bookshop behind the, the cabinet. Um, so this one thing, and then if, it's not available online, but you can watch his uh, Tempest on, on online. We couldn't bring in the Tempest. We wanted to bring Tempest, but he was on tour with the Tempest. So we brought uh, Mid Midsummer Night's Dream. So, but he's a really skilled actor who was trained in all sorts of dis different uh, discipline. There is no, and uh, like Japanese no and Indian, Katakali and Indonesian Topeng. So you see all this uh, cultural influence on this, uh, on, in this show done with this puppets. And then on the right side, we had Tempest done by, uh, by Shadow Light. So Larry was trained as a, uh, in Indonesia of Indonesia, Balinese shadow puppet. And then this pro production was huge with the is uh, co-production with um, Gamalan Group, the Indonesian Percussion Orchestra. And then we specifically, uh, I specifically selected these ones that you can see the, so it's Tempest in, this is a set in remote island that is kind of Bali in this sense. So, you can actually see this puppet, this fantastical figures, the this Balinese influence on them. And then you can set Shakespeare's play like really anywhere. I mean, it's, yeah. So it can, you by seeing the figures, you see what has been, what was depicted in the play, in, in the production, I think, in the, with the music. Mm -hmm. Now you can also see the excerpt online and then they ran a q a with the people uh, they showed the full production online and then they ran a q a with audience so i put a comment in, in comment i think emily is uh, will uh put the, those links um yeah for you if you are interested yes i wonder I, I was interested that you pointed out uh that some of fred kerchak's background is in studying uh different types of asian performance which is something that julie Taymor also did right yeah. before she came back and did um she was in such, indonesia also yes yeah and mm. and i to my mind that and i always think that helped her think about the value of puppet theater because um, like Julie Taymor, Larry Reed, to an even greater extent, became a Dalang, like Matthew Cohen did, and took in all this sense of puppetry as, you know, a higher art form than acting, really, I think, in, 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 in Indonesia. 
And also thinking of Kerchak, I didn't know that this until you said that, that his study of Kathakali and other Asian forms, those are all forms of theater that also highly prize puppet theater and mask theater. So connect, it's interesting to think of these American theater artists connecting with Asian performance forms that are already noticing and, and uh, valuing uh, puppet and, and mask theater. Yeah, it's also, I think with, I read in the program of the production, Larry wrote that, I mean, he studied the Shakespeare before he went to Indonesia, like, yeah. And then when he encountered the uh, Balinese shadow of puppetry, he saw a lot of, it was uh, pretty immediate that he can relate it to Shakespeare, the way the, these epics or stories right. operate in, in Asian theater also. He saw it in like, especially Tempest or other Shakespeare plays. So I think um, there was, there's uh, something to be, I don't want to make everything like same, like all the bit, but right. it, it, we can relate it that easily in, in if we, you have maybe open-minded maybe. Yeah. And then, well, with, yeah, yes, yes. With, um, I, I, it always struck me that in the structure of, um, Javanese Wayang stories, which are very structured, much as Shakespeare's uh, uh, plays are all structured on a, like a five act struck, you know, it's very clear with court scenes and traveling scenes and love scenes and battle scenes. You know, there's some really interesting parallels with this, just the structure of those mm -hmm. Shakespeare's tragedies and, and stories taken from Wayang. I wanted to point out that um, our viewer Polysonic uh, opined again, um, uh, she said the point about them being well-known stories, which you mentioned Min is a good one, not unlike Wayang riffing on well-known myths with comedy. Um, it's really cool to see Shakespeare done with such playfulness. And, and I think it, uh, Shakespeare also has that combination like in Macbeth of high tragedy and violence and then comedy. Hamlet has this too, right? The, the grave digger scene or with Macbeth, the, the watchman who, who's drunk and waits at the door of the castle, yeah. I think. There's Macbeth that. Macbeth probably lesser, lesser degree. Uh, what I do is uh, Macbeth is uh, kind of on like unusually like not comedy in in Macbeth, that's why Mr. Smile is pretty interesting also. But yeah, all the other, his tragedy, he has, like Shakespeare has this um, kind of element. I mean, I mean, Shakespeare wrote for public, yes. It's, um, it's the most popular entertainment, you can right. say, yeah, of that time. And then, and then just quickly, I mean, I was I was going to mention this one. We, we talked really about like just before yeah. we started, and I forgot about it. So I mean, it feels. Can I just go quickly? So yes. This about uh, Shakespeare manipulated, written by Susan Young. Then the use of dramatic works of Shakespeare in Teatro de Figura in Italy. Um, so. I kind of like I missed the timing, but so we think we might think you know I didn't mean that the Venus and Adonis is the first to like puppet show about Shakespeare. So Shakespeare time in during say Shakespeare period time it was easy to see puppet show in London where Shakespeare lived, and then um, this book kind of said talks about. Uh, it's about uh, Shakespeare done in I Italian puppet theater, but this one has a kind of research, this she puts a research into the earlier puppet shows done based on sh Shakespeare shows. So there mm -hmm. is an account that there's the puppet shows done in Shakespeare Globe in, in Shakespeare's time. And also there's a speculation that Shakespeare learned about Italy through puppet shows uh, so there were a lot of Italian puppet shows came to London and then do shows about Italy. And then that's where he got inspiration from mm -hmm. about the, about the shows, his, his place that is, that is about it, like a lot of them, like uh, 
Romeo and Juliet or the Merchant of Venice or Two Gentlemen of the Verona. They, they, so that's, um, and then the, it been, Shakespeare has been done with the puppets for since the Shakespeare's time. Mm. So, yeah, that, interesting. I, I didn't. I found yeah, I found this title really interesting also. Shakespeare manipulated, great. It is the, also the use of dramatic works of Shakespeare in Teatro di Figura in Italy. So it's usually the other way around. The way I approached it was also, um, was also like use of puppetry in Shakespeare plays. Mm -hmm. But this is the other way around, the use of uh, uh, Shakespeare in the tradition of uh, Italian puppetry. Mm. So I found it, um, yeah, interesting way of, it's a completely the other way around to you know, looking at the subject, I thought. There's that early 1600s play, uh, Bartholomew Fair, um, uh, that is from London, and it describes all sorts of puppet shows um, happening in London. And you realize, looking at that, also mm -hmm. that th there was a lot of puppet entertainment mm -hmm. going on. And of course, pre before Shakespeare and probably when he was a kid, there were also coming from medieval traditions, lots of, of puppet shows uh, performing, you know, Bible stories and stuff. So it seems like puppets were a background uh, or, or a part of English culture at the time Shakespeare was running around. And yeah. I, I really appreciate your, your talking about the fact that Shakespeare's plays were performed with puppets even during his lifetime. If I, if I yeah, the account to this uh, in this book is that actually this person saw Julius Caesar before he's done by puppets at the Globe before he sees it done by human actors. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I we appreciate um, uh, Jenna Beth Davidson, one of our highly talented. Puppet Arts graduate students mentioning uh, the Italian company, speaking of Italy, Teatro Giocovita, um, and their version of a uh, shadow puppet, uh, very good innovators of shadow puppet theater, um, doing Midsummer Night's Dream. And our friend Nancy Staub, um, great honor that Nancy's watching this, talking about open eye figure theater from Minneapolis, doing a Macbeth with witches. Um, uh, with the witches enacting the story with skulls on sticks and rags uh, as is costumes. It, is this uh, possible? Is it independent eye I have? A... Uh, uh, independent eye, I think, is different. It's this a is a different company, yeah. Open eye it's... figure theater in oh. Minneapolis. So. so it's also Macbeth. This, this is a kind of skull like figure here, too. Is it? Yeah, yeah, I think. Um, so we have just a few minutes left in our our forum here. Um, I like the way you uh, a little while ago you were saying that these productions of Shakespeare with puppets sort of pose a question, you know, and I was saying, well, of, of why and how could these juxtapositions of Shakespeare's texts and ideas work with puppets, and you, <laughs> you said it, let's. It's better to leave it as a question, in a way. But um, I don't. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if this is just something to, to muse about. What 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 are you thinking now about Shakespeare and and puppets, like for your own sort of scholarly work or are you thinking of doing another um, production with with Shakespeare and puppets? No, <laughs> no I, I like I kind of feel that at this moment not doing a, I, I, I don't have any plan to do another performance yet, but it kind of works it differently in each productions like because there's so much variety in what's happening or what has been happening in the past and yeah what happened before that this uh, this uh, encounter that encounter the, the the shakespeare done with puppets and objects it brings different elements we that's what 
I tried, I, I demos, I tried to demonstrate is that it's just, it has different stories to tell, can tell, or she so, brings different ideas to Shakespeare. Um, I think, um, so it's difficult to say there's just one, there's, I can say this is it, but rather than like, I would rather say puppet and object kind of expand what Shakespeare does. I mean, it's been doing it, but just to, there yeah. was no kind of systematic, like more, the, no, not, there has been studies done, but especially there was no, there's rare, it's rare that like scholars actually or um, puppetry do this specific topic in more broad sense, I, I think. There are some writings done by people who hardly knew about puppetry, went to see Shakespeare because it's Shakespeare and oh, it's interesting, but that's, uh, that I think that those people can get some point out of it, but mm -hmm. from puppetry, uh, angle we we can we can do better <laughs> can do some, something different mm. yeah and I, I I a moment ago you were talking about the fact that fact that Shakespeare Shakespeare plays were popular theater in his time right that they that's what people wanted to see it wasn't intellectual mm -hmm you know elite theater it was popular theater and it seems to me puppetry as in a way the most pop in puppeteers say the most popular form of theater around the world i mean if you think the in a way that an essence of popular theater is puppetry it seems to me in a way puppetry connected with the shakespeare shakespeare brings shakespeare back into the sort of popular idiom so yeah. i Yes. I don't know. It's, it's interesting, like, no, do we have time for this or something? So like once a while ago, like I saw these TV shows talking about David Tennant. Why is it? No, it's not a good thing to say. <laughs> the David Tennant did, 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 who was a doctor who, do you okay. know what they, is they doing Hamlet and then that brings kids to watch Hamlet because right. David Tennant is doing Hamlet, those kids are coming into theater to see David Tennant doing Hamlet. But yeah, I think it's not like kind of, but it's not kind of degrading Shakespeare. As no. I said, that it's, uh, it kind of brings a lot, that it brings or kind of opens up like other, the area didn't really human actors um, of course puppet theaters are always done with the human actors but human alone can not uh, open up i think great well i appreciate this chance to talk with you about um shakespeare and and puppets and how it works and it's still mysterious in a way to me it's fascinating um shakespeare's done been done in in so many different ways and sometimes it's controversial how people do it but um i i appreciate the way that you you've been talking about this and the way that your exhibition has brought uh this subject to the ballard institute and then to our audience tonight so I want to thank you, Dr. Song, yes. for, for doing this. Yeah, uh, and I will go over to the comment. If I go, go to Facebook page and then, and then I can see the comments and then if there were questions unanswered and I can answer, then I can go and answer there perhaps, yes. Okay. Yeah. All is right. it? Is it? Is it? Because I feel there might be something I I cannot redo the whole comments. So, yeah. I'll, I will, I promise that I I go I visit the Facebook page and then see the comments and then see if I can we can continue conversation there too. Yes. Okay. Yes. So. so
thanks again. That's Thank great you, you can stay on and answer questions. I uh, just wanted to remind people that the next uh, Puppet Forum will be Thursday, December 3rd, uh, Puppetry and en in Engineering uh, with Ed Weingart um, and Jason Lee and Basil Twist, a uh, special guest from New York City. So I look forward to working with you, young men, on the, the new exhibition you're curating for the Ballard Institute. It was nice to hear your kids earlier this evening. And um, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks to everybody who was watching. Thank you thank so much. Thank you, John. And thank you, Emily. Yes, thanks, Emily Wicks. Exactly.